Hi, Kevin Coop here, and this is FaceTime with the Content Guy. So long-time readers of Morning News People know that I enjoy the occasional glass of wine. Okay, not so occasional. I really like wine. I, I've really enjoyed uh, learning about wine over the last 10, 12, 14 years or so. I've gotten a little bit more educated about it. I, I know a little bit more about it now than I used to, and uh, I really enjoy wine. i got to admit, I'm partially addicted to the romance of it all, which is why I'm still sort of, you know, uh, partial to to uh, corks as opposed to screw tops, although I've been persuaded by a number of my friends that I shouldn't be quite so finicky about that. And, I, you know, it's why I'm really lucky. I have a couple of friends who actually own vineyards. And let me tell you, so there is nothing cooler than hanging out with these folks and, like, being on their deck overlooking the vineyards and uh, having a glass of wine and you know the wine came from the grapes that you're looking at. I mean, it's unbelievable. It's just so totally cool. And I really like that. Um, I've been fascinated recently to read some stuff about how the, you know, the U.S. wine market is changing. For example, the Associated Press reported the other day that, quote, online wine options are everywhere, from flash sale sites like Lot 18 offering daily deals to Facebook prodding you to send a little something for Aunt Susie's birthday. And now there's a new generation of startups, such as Club W, which adds a little algorithm to your Alborino. I like that. Adds a little algorithm to your Alborino using surveys and ratings to figure out what you might like to drink next. Very cool. I was also fascinated, frankly, to learn in this same article that today only seven states have an outright ban on direct-to-consumer shipping, though some of the states that do allow shipping have various restrictions, and 89%, almost 9 out of 10 Americans, 89% of the U.S. population has access uh, to direct-to-consumer sales according to the Wine Institute. Now, a couple of things occur to me as I read these words. Now, one is that it's getting a lot more competitive out there with wine, right? And if you have a brick-and-mortar store and you're in the wine business, you have to understand that uh, you these are what you have to compete with, right? You have to compete with these online stores. Now, I've told this, this particular story before on Morning News Beat, but let me do it again because I think it's appropriate. You know, There was a time maybe 15, 16 years ago that I, you know, I didn't know that much about wine and I would never spend more than $10 uh, a bottle on wine. I just never did. I just, I, you know, didn't matter to me that much. And one of the things I learned was by joining a local wine club, uh, Nicholas Roberts, which is a store here in town, is basically what they said is here. Here's the deal. You're going to pay 45 bucks a month and you're going to get three bottles of wine. You can choose red or white or a mix and we're going to pick it and you're going to trust us and we're going to bring you interesting good stuff. Well, Oh, it was amazing. It was amazing the difference between like an $8 bottle of wine and a 16 or 18 or $20 bottle of wine. And pretty soon I started, I traded up and I'm spending a lot more now on a per bottle of wine than I ever used to because they educated me. And I've been getting three bottles of, uh, of wine a month from Nicholas Roberts for, oh, it's got to be 10, 12 years now. And it's been a great relationship. In fact, such a great relationship that Nicholas Roberts actually powers the Morning News Beat Wine Club. And you should check that out, by the way. Not, I might as well do a little commercial here. Uh, Morning News Beat Wine Club, which is kind of cool. They power it, and there's a lot of interesting uh, wines on that. Uh, but the other thing that occurs to me, quite frankly, is that uh, you know there are retailers out there that do a really good job with wine. But I always wonder why some of those retailers don't do the same kind of good job in other departments. Why can't they bring the same kind of expertise that they have in their wine departments where they offer information, they provide tastings, they've developed a reputation for being a resource of information as well as just a source of product. Why can't they bring that same expertise to other departments throughout the store? It seems to me that would kind of make the rest of the store as magical perhaps as the wine department and, and maybe do the kinds of things that they need to do to be competitive with all the different kinds of competition that is out there today. Uh, just an idea, maybe worth thinking about, It'd be worth drinking too. Anyway, that's what's on my mind this Thursday morning. And as always, I want to hear what's on your mind.